Len from Halfway Homestead, and uh, we're back today with another video on, um, well, I guess let me start with what we're doing. Uh, tomorrow we've got a guy coming in with a uh, track, uh, track loader, and he's going to knock, off, knock over about 25 trees for us. Um, these are trees that are just not very good. They're not useful for anything. They're taking up space that, where we want to put in a uh, kind of a mini orchard. Um, it's going to be a variety of things inside there, everything from elderberries and blueberries to a couple of uh, fruit trees and so forth. And um, we're going to just kind of play it by ear and see what we can put in there. Uh, maybe some American Beauty berries. It's going to be multi-tiered. Um, but he's coming tomorrow, so he's going to knock over trees. He's not chainsawing trees. So if I can get him into, you know, 8, 12-foot logs, he can get them moved for me and stack them where I need them. So guess what I'm doing tomorrow? chainsaw work. So that means today I'm sharpening chains. Um, I have, I am not an experienced logger by any, any stretch at all. If you're familiar with our content at all, we are novices at breathing. Uh, we are definitely learning as we go. Um, and I've been running a saw now for about two years, which is probably just enough time for me to be able to confidently say, I haven't hurt myself yet. That's it. When it comes to chainsaws, I don't think you could run these things for 60 years and still say that you're an expert. There's just so many things that can go wrong and, and, and horribly wrong at that. So anything that I'm getting ready to say is my experience. I would love to hear your experiences if you've got better suggestions or what have you. I've tried the uh, fi different filing techniques and so forth. I've looked at different tools and I have, I'm using what I believe to be the best tool that I have tried so far. Um, you may have seen this already. It's been out for maybe a year, year and a half, I guess. And that is uh, the steel sharpener. So you may have seen this thing. It's kind of funky looking. At first you're like, what? I don't get it. But then you understand how it works and you realize what a time saver it is. So what's the number one thing people will tell you when you go to try to learn how to sharpen a chainsaw if you're going to do it on the saw or is... Somehow you gotta get this thing started, right? You can't have it moving all around. The so they'll tell you, put it in a vise. Put your bar in a vise and go from there. I'm in the middle of moving workshops. This is going to be the new workshop. The old workshop is across on the other property. And that one is where my vise is. So I don't have a vise here. What else can I do? Um, you know, and this is something you can do not only just in your workshop, but you could do it in the field. As long as you've got, say your pickup and one other thing. And that is what we're going to do today. So let me see if I can move this over here. And I may have to adjust the camera. I think I'm going to have to. So the one-man show here, guys. So bear with me. Um, that looks like it'll be all right. So in this case, I'm using my table saw. It's a flat surface. But the other thing I need is a clamp. Simple clamp will get the job done. All I'm going to do is clamp down the handle of this directly onto our table saw and from there it should stay nice and sturdy. I had this, there we go. I'm wondering, like, what's going on here? So now this is about as sturdy as I can get it here. Is it perfect? No. Better would be a vice. I don't have one here. I need to get this, this thing sharpened. I've got four chains I need to get sharpened this evening so that tomorrow I can run saw all day without having to take and stop and sharpen a chain because I'm paying this guy for the day. I need him here one day. So in one day, I got to get all this done and cleared and moved because I don't want to pay him for day two. So how does this thing work? If you notice, this particular one is built, they come in different measurements. Let's see if I can get this up here where it'll focus. There we go probably backwards because it's a camera. What are you going to do? Um, so this particular one goes um, at uh, 0.325 is the file size. And I want to say this is, I forget the angle because like I told you, I don't know what I'm doing, but I do know how it works. And it's been a huge, huge success for us. Let me bring this back and see if this thing focuses back in. Come on. I uh, don't do this to me. Let's see what happens there. All right, 
Told you, I don't have to do anything, including work my phone. But what this other thing this has is it's got, an, it's got arrows on it, okay? And let's see, come on, focus in. It's got this handy dandy arrow. And so this means this is the direction the file is going to go on your chain. So depending on which teeth you're filing is gonna depend on if you're going this way or if you're flipping it over and you're going this way because the other arrow goes the other direction. How it works is this center um, file here is what files your rakes or your, um, everybody calls them something different. I was taught they're called rakes, so that's what we're gonna call them. This file, in this case, if I'm filing this way, the bottom file files the cutter, which is what actually does all the work, okay? When I flip it over to go the other direction, now this one is the bottom one. And so, and the rake, uh, the, the rake file still gets the rakes. What this does is with every motion across, I get both the cutter and the rake. So that's something you used to do separately. Now I can do them all at once. I guess I should take my talking mouth off the screen and put my whole head on there. I'm not sure it's an improvement, but that's what we're gonna go with. So, um, so we can go through and do an entire chain in just a few minutes because you're able to do everything in one motion. Um, now, I personally like to, depending on the, on the dullness of the chain, I've worked these chains pretty hard recently. Um, went out to a friend's property on another farm and helped them for a half day or so and was cutting through some pretty heavy stuff. So I'm gonna go and, and test it after like five strokes and see how it feels. Likely I'm gonna be about five strokes per link. So let me grab my little, my, my other thing that I need here, which is a handy dandy Sharpie. So I like to make sure I don't forget what tooth I started on. So I will pick a tooth and I will cover the top of it black. And that way there, as I come around, I know that I've hit that, I've got back to that tooth I started on. And I always start with the one I marked, okay? So in this particular case, we are, let's see, we are here, and we're gonna set down and make sure I got this right. And it always takes me a second the first time through because it's counterintuitive as to how you want to do it. Yep. All right. So I'm going to start here and this, let me see if I can get the camera over here because this is like a top down kind of view thing. Hopefully my phone doesn't break and drop off of here. When this thing sets in, in this tooth and sets here, you'll notice it doesn't really kind of go in there. Hopefully you're getting this until this, the edge of this is perpendicular to the bar. The edge of the handle is perpendicular to the bar. That helps you keep your angle, right? So that you get the correct angle. And as you come across, then you've, you're all set. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I feel like I'm doing this backwards now because I'm under pressure and I'm talking and I feel like I should be going, no. No, I had it right. I always do this the first time because it is, it's a funky tool. So yes, there's my arrow. This is the direction I'm gonna go and we're gonna do a couple of strokes here. Let's get this back to where hopefully you can see the whole thing. And yep, there's all of me in my glory. And, and I will put this right up against kind of my belt buckle here um, to help steady it some. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just gonna feel that. And that actually feels pretty good. Now, Let's see if the camera will show this. I won't know if the camera shows this until I look at it on the video playback. Oh, but assuming it does, this is the tooth that I just did, and this is the rake. You can actually see where the rake has been filed down some, and so it's going to stay consistently even with the tooth itself. Okay, so we're going to go with that and set this back over, and we're going to run through this some more. <coughs> some more. And hopefully I will do them all right. And so has anybody else out there used this before? And if so, what's been your experience with it compared to traditional files? Um, I will leave a link to this below. We are an Amazon affiliate. Um, I know that's pretty common these days. 
It is a great way for small businesses like ours to supplement their income a little bit. Um, it allows us to kind of diversify and not be caught up exclusively in one product. Um, it's a huge, huge help to us. If you're at all interested in supporting our channel, obviously a like and a share goes a long, long way. That's, that's more beneficial than anything else. But uh, consider using the links below, our Amazon affiliate link for any Amazon shopping you're doing, um, or even just for this product itself. We will usually leave links to any products that we have used and like, and we will also tell you about products that we don't like. Um, we're not bought by anybody. We've never received a, a free product. I'm not really sure I'm interested in that sort of thing. I guess it would have to depend on the agreement. If a manufacturer wanted to send us something to try and they were willing to allow us to have honest feedback, then I might be willing to try something, but I am not interested in at all in, in misleading anybody. Um, we work on a very, very small budget, and so if we buy a bad tool, it really hurts. And I don't want us to ever recommend a, a subpar tool to anybody. Um, so yeah, this is our process. It works out pretty well. I'm probably halfway through the, the, the first side of this chain, just as I'm kind of shooting the breeze with you. Appreciate you hanging out. Um, have you tried any of the electric sharpeners yourself on a personal note? Um, you know, like not taking it someplace, but do you own an electric sharpener? I've looked, I've looked at a few and I've, I'm curious how much better they are than this is in terms of quality of sharpen versus cost efficiency, because this is very cost efficient um, and it's not time consuming at all. So. I would love to see kind of like feedback from folks who have used this compared to an electric sharpener. Um, what's your time savings versus, versus your cost? Um, and what do you think the end result feels like? You know, when you can take it out there on a fresh log and, you know, nice thick, uh, dense wood like an oak or something like that, how does it feel uh, in comparison? Because so far, this has done a tremendous job for us. Uh, we've cut through some pretty rough stuff with it uh, a couple weeks ago on a friend's farm. And she even commented, she was amazed at how well this saw performed. Um, if you're not familiar with this saw, it's a Dolman. Um, I believe, if I've got it correct, they are owned by Makita. Um, and this particular one is about equivalent to the Husqvarna of the same class, but it was about $120 cheaper. Um, talking to the salesperson, and these are people that we actually buy a lot of our farm equipment from, so they have a vested interest in keeping me happy. Um, by the way, that was all the way around one time, so I've just got the other half to do at this point. You can see that's pretty quickly. Um, and so now we can go ahead and mark our teeth going the other direction. Um, but he told me that uh, they've never had a problem with these, that they run super solid and they've been very, very happy with them. And so given that recommendation, I thought I'd try it and we've been super happy as well. Um, so what's your experience uh, with the, these types of filing systems and so forth? And like I said, I think five is gonna be good all the way around. And I'll probably speed up this part of the video just to finish getting through this and we'll wrap it up here at the end. Much easier to go faster when I'm not worried about trying to, to talk. Um, it is a little difficult to keep your thoughts straight while you count and make sure you don't skip a tooth. Um, but I guess that's all part of the practice of getting used to filming videos again. Um, if you've been with us since the beginning, you know we started this about five years ago and about two years ago we kind of fell off the map. I guess I can tell a little of that story right now while we're wrapping up. But essentially, we started chasing after farmers markets for our um, pastured chicken, our ducks, and our quail. And while that was very profitable for us, it was not necessarily um, good for our long-term plan for our property. And we have, we are two years behind now because we've been focusing on that. So instead, we have to 
uh, we've decided to refocus and double down on our building our, our homestead for our long-term vision. And in that process, that means getting back to doing the things that we start out, started out doing, which was we want to teach and we want to share our experiences as city folks that transplanted to the country and what that looks like for us and what we've learned. So we're going back that direction and this is part of that, going back to doing videos about our experiences, about our lessons learned, the good, the bad, and sometimes ugly. Um, they always look better if my wife's in the camera, but you're stuck with me today. She wants to learn chainsaw, but she hasn't got it quite yet. So uh, we got one more tooth to go. All right, so this chain is done and should be good to go for tomorrow. Uh, feeling pretty good about it. I think it'll run just great. I've got two more chains to get done, uh, three more chains to get done tonight. And let's see if you can do this here. There we go, you're stuck with me. Um, and we'll go ahead and get those done. Um, again, there's links below if you wanna support us in any way. But uh, for now, uh, thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe, like, you know all the things. I hate to, to, to say all that stuff because you get bombarded with, with every video from every, uh, every uh, creator. But honestly, it doesn't cost much and it does help a whole lot. So thank you so much. We appreciate uh, you hanging out with us. Leave any questions below. We'd love to interact with you. And we'll